Hey guys, and welcome back to the e-commerce uptick, or if you're watching on YouTube, welcome back to my channel. Today, we're going to talk about how to determine the best free shipping threshold if you're running a D2C e-commerce brand. This is pretty important, right? Because if you get free shipping, that's going to dive into your margins. And if you do it wrong, you know, that could be unsustainable and help you. Yeah reach bankruptcy faster so it's very important to set this up correctly and there's a few different things i want to show you today so i'm going to dive into that in a second and by the way if you're watching this on youtube or if you're watching on spotify please do review or like this video because it is the only reason why i continue to do more content so please hit that button, write a review or subscribe to my channel. All right, let's dive into this video. I'm going to share my screen so I can kind of show you some of the things I'm going through. So here we go. First and foremost thing you want to discuss or have a conversation about if you're doing this is what are your business goals? Free shipping thresholds are really, really important, but they are supported by and often a result of the main business goal you have. So is it to increase your average order value? Is it to increase profit, maybe conversion rate? Or do you just want to make sure you're maintaining your margin if you're giving that free shipping for certain visitors on your website. So let's talk about each of them and how you can increase this specific metric. I'm going to give you some specific examples that will make it super clear for you to do. So first of all, let's say you want to increase AOV or your average order value. The best and easiest way to do this is simply by running different shipping tests to determine what is your optimal threshold. The key here is to analyze your current AOV. So if you're on Shopify, just hit your analytics dashboard and look at what your average order value is the last 30 days and you can kind of see where we're at now now let's say you're at 75 bucks right now you want to test going above that to see how that influences your revenue per visitor your conversion rate your profit per visitor and you want to see based on that data what you want to do in terms of setting that threshold what we see from most of our clients when we're testing this is that somewhere between 10 to 40 percent above their average order value is where you want to put your three shipping threshold so if you're at 75 bucks it's probably probably somewhere between that 75 to 100 bucks that will give you the highest conversion rate. But sometimes you even see something crazy that 120 bucks or 130 bucks can work because yes, you're seeing a lower conversion rate, but it makes up for it in terms of average order value being so much higher. And there are certain tactics, I'm going to get into that later, stick around on how you can make sure that people actually want to increase their average order value and spend more money in your store. The app that we're using right now to test free shipping thresholds is shipscout.app. So you can just go check that out I have no affiliation with them and it is also something we're going to be implementing into supersonic which is our software that we're developing right now i can just show you right now we're doing server side tracking we're just finished the a b testing module so you can do all your a b testing inside and then later on we're also going to be doing other advanced tests like free shipping price tests and so forth but that's coming later just go check it out if you want to see what we're doing and play around with the features we already have that was aob and it's super simple to set up you can set it up in ship scout and you literally just say what thresholds you want to test and it will give you revenue per visitor profit per visitor and it's really nice it's simple to do now let's say you want to increase your profit that can be really really important as well you might want to increase your profit in order to make your funnel sustainable or whatever it might be and usually there's a few different things you need to keep in mind here first of all there is a metric when you're testing these things called profit per visitor so that's the metric you want to use if you're increasing profit it makes total sense and often you're going to be looking at conversion rate as one of the more important metrics here as well and one thing i do want to highlight is profit per visitor is really nice right and profit per visitor might tell you suggest to you that this test is going on and you should raise your three shipping threshold to increase your profit it might say that but the thing is this is just a picture at the front of the store when they see your site and they get that initial order in but what about profit from a more holistic perspective what if you can track how much they're spending the first three months six months nine months 12 months and maybe you're seeing that after six months on average they tend to do another order or two orders additionally which means that when you look at it from a six month perspective the ltv is much higher and actually your total profit is higher in this example it may be better for you to do everything possible to increase the conversion rate because you're going to get more people into that store and you know because of the data 
that they are going to convert down the line. They're going to buy more times from you. So your profit over six months is way higher. That's why you cannot just look at those data points you see immediately in the app. You need to see how your business is tracking over a longer period of time. But the way to deploy that is obviously to make sure people are paying more for shipping. That is one way you can increase profit because they're not going to dive into your margins. You can also increase the AOV, which obviously means you're going to make more profit as well. So there's two, three different ways you can do that. But just keep in mind the user journey over the next three, six and 12 months. Let's go into how you can just increase your conversion rate overall, because right now there's just tons and tons of businesses doing free shipping thresholds. And honestly, it's just not really making a huge difference anymore. Most shoppers just expect free shipping. So they're not going to pay a lot of attention to it. It may be a conversion killer if you don't have any free shipping thresholds. But again, it's just not moving the needle as much as it used to. So what can you do to increase conversion rate in your store? when it is related to shipping. Well, obviously you can lower the cost of shipping. You can lower the cost of express sh shipping. Those are two methods. You can lower the cost of the um, free shipping threshold. So you don't have to spend as much to buy things. Obviously that's gonna be easy. So those are three methods. But the fourth thing is what I'm alluding to here in the screenshot is that and I've talked about this in the past, by the way, multiple times, is creating these different thresholds in which you obtain certain bonuses or benefits. And this is just one example. There's just so many different ones you can do. This example is from True Classic. You can see they have free shipping. It's almost at, I don't know, 160 bucks or something like that. But you can see they have free gifts as the more you spend, the more gifts you unlock. Consider that the price of the product, your cost price, this product is really low and it can get your AOV up and it can also be a category category opener, which means they might try new products that you are having a difficult time selling, maybe because they're new. And so it can be a really good way to expand your business and maybe get them back more because you are seeing a category for the first time they were not aware of, they haven't tried. So let's say you're selling pants and suddenly you're giving some shirts for free uh, that allows them to sort of see the quality of a new category which means they might come back later. And as you can see here, there are four different thresholds. This is the go-to that we also recommend. Really, really important is to be able to track exactly how far away they are from the next threshold. So let's say I already achieved free shipping. It's gonna say you're 32 bucks away from the free socks or whatever it might be. So it has to be specific because it needs to say up here exactly how far away you are because I wanna make sure that when I'm browsing around in the shop, that I know exactly how much I have to spend to get to that next tier. Most businesses are not doing that. They're just highlighting different free benefits, but it doesn't dynamically count how far away you are from each threshold. And this is the key because otherwise it just doesn't produce the conversion uplift that you could have if you did it correctly. And by the way, this is not the limitation of everything you can do. You could do a membership club. You could do something where for every 100 bucks you spend, you get 10% credit, which could make it possible for you to be part of a loyalty club, membership club. So there are different things. You could give gift cards away, which you know they could give away to other people. There are certain things you can really be creative Creative here. You could do bonus of whatever item you have in your car, you'll get an, an extra unit. You could do other samples, like that's a quick way to do it. So samples are always great. You could do mystery boxes that can work really well for like supplement brands and so on. So there's lots of different thresholds you can do. And if you want to find a very concrete way to implement this, you can use Upcart, that is an app on Shopify. You can use Rebuy, which is more expensive, but can also do a lot of other things. These are the top two apps in my opinion but there are tons of other ones this is actually a feature we want to implement again in supersonic because we find it so fundamental for high conversion rates that we want to make sure we can have the cart integrated in our tool which further allows us to do way better shipping tests like ship scout because we control the cart which is often a limitation because what happens is when you're testing different thresholds and multi-tier systems the problem is that ship scout will not integrate with upcart and rebuy so it means that all these numbers are wrong doing the testing and that can just mess up a lot of things but if you control everything in the same app this is going to be possible. So this is why we want to do it with Supersonic in the future as well. The last thing is how do you maintain your margins? You might just want to say like, I just want to make sure I'm not losing money on giving away free shipping. So the way you do that is you calculate your gross profit. So basically what you have left after you pay for the cost of the product. In this example, I just wrote down 40%. I wrote down that the store in this example has an AOV of 75 bucks and the average shipping and fulfillment cost is 10 bucks. Again, it's just to simplify it. it might 
might be completely different for you, but these are the numbers you need to have in mind. Once you have this, all these numbers, you can kind of calculate what your three shipping threshold should be in order to maintain your margins. So you're going to do your average shipping and fulfillment costs divided by your gross margins plus your average order value. We have our free shipping threshold and it should be this formula right here. So when we take into our consideration, average shipping cost 10 bucks, gross margins 40%, it comes out to 25 bucks. 25 bucks is what we need to secure on top of our average order value in order to maintain our margins. So it actually means in this example that I need to set my three shipping threshold at 100 bucks. And when I do that, I'm going to maintain my gross profit margins, which is what I want to do in this example. And this can be really nice if you are just trying to make sure your numbers are matching up and you're maintaining the profit you want to grow and build your businesses. But this is super simplified. And in most businesses, there's way more considerations to take into account, like LTV after three, six, nine, 12 months, like profit per visitor and AOV and so forth and so forth. Certain businesses, people come in once and buy and they're not going to come back. That's the example of bet companies they are selling bets. You buy your bet once, you're not coming back for 10 years. So you might as well sell all the pillow covers you can and all that stuff. They're just not going to come back. And as a total opposite of that, you got, let's say, supplements or food related product where people are consuming it and coming back over and over and over. In this case, it might actually make sense to increase conversion rate because you know they're going to come back over and over and over. You may not have to pay a lot of money to acquire that customer again and again. So a lot of considerations, but I hope this was super useful. If you found this valuable, please do like the video review it on Spotify, subscribe on the YouTube. And if you do, I'll continue to do a lot more of these videos.